Wait, is this one of those animated kid movies that require psychedelic drugs to properly enjoy? Because I was not informed of that shit, and now I have to cram six hours of use into 20 seconds. Hang on. Oh, hey, Alan Snorkel, I'll boot slop the fandangle. Look, I can first of all. Brothers and sisters, penguins all. Hey, boss, I know it's an animated sequel and all, but what if we didn't start this movie with narration? You know, to make one of these that's a little bit different. Shut your mouth, Lou. Don't you know WB has bugs all over this place? But, boss, God damn it, Lou, back to work. And make sure you fill your fart joke quota by noon. Happy Feet 2, The Meltdown. Happy Feet 2? Look, I'm not saying it should have been happier feet or too happy two feet. Why are you spelling out the number two? Just reminds us about that stupid silent W in there and makes me think it should be pronounced happy feet two. Quit spelling out numbers, movie. Who do you think you are, Steven Soderbergh? Also, what's up with the letter sweaters? Are they cold? And if so, wouldn't they be losing more heat from their head or genitals? This would be like me going out in the winter with only a headband around my midriff. I'm not saying I haven't done that. I'm just saying the terms of my parole indicate I'm supposed to avoid it. As this movie starts out with a loose adaptation of Janet Jackson's classic Rhythm Nation, I'm wondering how many great songs have been in the ass by animated movies just to serve a temporary sugar fix of a purpose meaning nothing to the movie. I will survive in Angry Birds, Call Me Maybe, and Sing, Rufus Wainwright's cover of Jeff Buckley's Hallelujah and Shrek, everything in the Trolls movies. Also, I have to ask, the last movie did end with humans watching these penguins do their elaborate song and dance, right? How have singing, dancing penguins not been turned into a tourist trap yet? You're telling me someone wouldn't have created Ice Vegas, Gatlisberg, or Brand Stardica already? Oh yeah, remember that last movie where the kid couldn't sing, but he could dance real good, and Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jackman with the parents and... Let's dance! Let's show! Right, they all heard this and responded in unison. How do they even keep time together from those distances? Singing and dancing penguins I can buy, but the physics of sound are guided by immutable laws, damn it! Using punctuation in the middle of your name! Matt Damon ruins his inevitable surprise cameo by letting them put his name in the opening credits. Movie doesn't know how to Damon properly. They do say that the way to a female penguin's cloaca is through the seduction of the tap dance. At least that's what I learned from Planet Earth After Dark. Nothing against Magda or Miss Viola, but is this movie going to list every actor and character by name? We're four minutes into this thing, and it's still throwing up credits like it's an episode of NCIS or something. You know, there are constant not-so-subtle references to shit warming up here and melting the ice and snow, but the penguins don't notice it. I know they're chill and like to party and shit, but you'd think this very important change to their natural habitat would be worthy of some mention. Well... The only way to find out is to try it. Cocaine dealers. No one will laugh at you, I promise. Empty promises. That's it! Get stupid! Warner's instructions to the screenwriters accidentally gets included in the script. We're having a private conversation with little Eric. One that's taking place in the middle of what until recently was a huge dance party that involved the entire colony, who incidentally are still right behind us. Hello? Where are you? <sighs> Does Robin Williams get a pass for doing appropriated accents? Guys, I looked in the Wiktionary and everything, and I still can't find a ruin. So, sin for the death of nuance, I guess. This is one fabulous banquet! You will never laugh at again! God damn, there's a lot of plot crammed into this opening bit. What's happening with Ramon? Sure, he was lightly chided by a few females a little while ago after he hit on them, but is he really a social pariah in this commune? Or is it just a cheap ploy from the movie to set up conflict right off the bat? We will find them, and when we do, you'll find a way to put things right. Put things right? What did Mumble do to Eric besides gently encourage him to dance earlier? Jesus, if penguins are this overreactionary to minor slights, they're gonna be extinct long before the polar ice caps melt. Hey, Will? Is that you? Of course it's me. Damon and Pitt? Throw in a Krill Clooney and we could literally do Ocean's 500 trillion. This is kidnapping. Now go, shoot, shoot! Is Ramon seriously not going to immediately mention the rogue wave that kicked his ass just a couple seconds ago? Is this a common occurrence down here? Well, what are we even looking for? I'll tell you what I'm looking for, a reason why the studio spent whatever they did to bring in A-list talent to play a couple of goddamn shrimps. Goodbye, Krill World. Puns! So this is all we are. Lunch. To think we spent our whole lives not knowing the truth. Sure, why not add random philosophical krill to a kid penguin movie? These krill are so existential, I'm pretty sure Warner fished them out of Pete Docter's recycling bin. Atticus Ramon. There was no greater hunter than Prince Mumbledink. He can track a falcon on a cloudy day. He can find Ramon. Based on this level of commotion, I can only assume the penguins are about to perform the annual Otto Stupa. I got so much love, I'm going to explode! Soliciting! 
Man, that is a massive colony, and Ramon and the kids haven't walked that far from the Emperor crew. Why isn't there more crossbreeding between the two tribes than there is? Hell, I bet the head of this crowd is just steps away from the Rhythm Nation gathering. The moment is gone. I've lost my moyo. It's like this movie watched Austin Powers and Goldmember and didn't think the antagonist was cartoonishly Scandinavian enough. Eric? The convenient way Mumble stumbles on this humble jumble is a temporal bumble and geographic fumble, so I shall continue to grumble. Not that I can play it for you, so you'll have to take my word for it, but this Mighty Sven song is such a mess rhythmically, rhymically, melodically, and narratively that it may be the worst attempt at musical ink since Russell Crowe and Tom Cruise toured that Les Mis Rock of Ages mashup in the summer of 2013. Deus Exxon Machina! I know Eric's an impressionable young buck and all, but why do you immediately fall this hard in love with Sven? He's seriously ready to pledge his total allegiance to this mother only because he can fly. These two dickholes out here jamming like they aren't standing in the way of anyone who wants to use those stairs or that door. Yo, how many people are even on this Greenpeace boat? That's a f ton of chickens. Also, that's a fully functional rotisserie over an open fire in a nice kitchen in this ship galley. How many publicly funded ventures could afford that? This is green! I'm no climatologist, but no matter how bad global warming is, I'm pretty sure there wouldn't be super green grass right under the permafrost in Antarctica. If you will it, is this a Wonder Woman 1984 prequel? Did Maxwell Lord seriously steal his signature catchphrase from a group of f***ing penguins? Where are the kids? Security! Didn't Ramon just say Mumble was his best friend earlier in the movie? Cause up with him freaking out about his appearance now. If you want it, you must will it. If you will it, it will be yours. That's funny because I've been willing this movie to have some sort of coherent structure for the last half hour and it still hasn't happened. <laughs> Why are these dill holes even clapping right now? Sven was whispering his advice to Eric, so even the penguins closest to him would have trouble hearing that There's no telling what we might become. Fine. Be a plankton muncher all your life. That's crustaceous. I'm gonna go chew on something that has a face! Whoa there, Hannibal. That's a bit intense for a kid's movie. What is this, Silence of the Clams? This, this way is better. But shortcuts are shorter. The character confidently walks away from the rest of their party despite everyone knowing the rest of their party will go another direction cliche. That's the one thing I can't do, mighty. Huh? Back up. As if this overprotective father of an adventurous son that got himself lost story wasn't enough, we've now entered the Bruce the Shark portion of the Finding Nemoing. Let's see it my way, sport. One day, I'll be protecting my beach. Sub-Zero Skip. <laughs> Beachmaster What's-His-Nuts survives this. Seriously, between the krill, the sven, the climate change, and now the f***ing elephant seal family, I'm fast approaching my limit for side stories. And we're only 30 minutes in. What on earth are you doing? I'm stalking. Stalking. Hey, how long do you estimate these krill can live outside the water? Two seconds? Three? As long as the LSD trip lasts for the writers? Hmm. A little chewy. Even in crustacean form, Brad Pitt's character has to be shown eating in every f***ing movie he's in. This movie's slightly above average, especially for a sequel to a silly animated film, but it cannot escape the necessity of showing a f***ing slow-mo shot of the character screaming We are the champions, my friend. And we'll keep on fighting until the end. Let's Still better than that Bohemian Rhapsody movie, though. I owe you one, my friend. Cheers, Brian. No, I mean it. Of course he does, because Mumble saved this asshole's life, he's definitely gonna come back later in the movie to help save the day. It's basically the animated, fuzzy, arctic version of Ethan Hawke saving that girl in the alley in Training Day. Hey buddy, how do we get out? I don't know, how'd you get up those peaks that many of you are on? There are some sheer cliff faces, but there are plenty of feasible ways out of here. Like here, 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 and who knows how many other options at the ass end of this crater that we can't see from this view. Yo, Dad! Atticus, my man! Good to see y'all still kick- Well, technically, they're more waddling than kicking, but no worries. It's a common mistake. Also, why was Mumble the only one to go off looking for the kids when they were obviously missing from the colony? It's not like the crater formed right after he left. There is a way to feed a whole lot of you! Oh, man! Are they really saying that Mumble is the penguin Jesus and he's gonna come back with seven loaves of bread and two fish? The hell is with these scene transitions? A screen wipe, then the circle blend? If this is secretly a Star Wars property, I want to see two of those sunsets. Ice, the ice sounds nice. Check one. Ah, I see. He's gonna wrap his way out of this hole. Mommy, can you get out of there? Get out of there! Hey! I don't know if there's a way out! No, way out! Convenient word selecting echoes are convenient. Winnie 
need some mother love, Miss G. Sure, it sounds intriguing, and Gloria really is a pilf, but there's no time for that thinking, dude. This ballad that is balloting on for some time has the lines, Look at the stars instead of the dark, and you'll find your heart shines like the sun. But if my heart shines like the sun, why is it even dark? And how am I supposed to even see the stars in the first place? That didn't make sense when the judge sang it 30 years ago, and it still doesn't now. I guess they can stop worrying about accelerated global warming, considering there's a melancholia moon headed straight for their asses. Hang on, why are we zooming out to space and zooming over Europe? The sh** does that have to do with anything related to this plot? In fact, what is this plot? We could start a little swarm of our own! We're both males. We'll adopt! These two feel like they're in their own movie. And honestly, it's miles better than the main story, which is clearly a sin. Oh no! Flying birds! It's like we haven't had enough distractions from whatever passes for a f***ing A story in this movie. Might as well have the Mumbalorian have to complete a completely unrelated task in order to find out where to take his son to get trained. Why are the skuas f***ing with the penguins right now instead of just eating them? Do they taste better when they're scared? Jeez. Before On Your Left and There Are More of Us, Poe, there was this f***ing cavalry of penguins that showed up en masse out of nowhere. I mean, seriously, how did Bo convince these assholes to come all the way out here? It was Eric that got all the attention the last time they were there. Ramon, it's incredible. Everybody came. Bragging about your orgies. These fisher falls are cascading down this slope completely unguarded, and yet the scavenger birds are happy to just sit here and crack wise. Do you want to eat, or do you want to be a convenient side villain in a poorly plotted sequel? I can get you more. There are literally thousands of other penguins in this colony, but Sven has an insta-boner for Gloria. Why? She seems nice and all, but does she really stand out from a crowd unless you get to know her? Hombre! I feed your wife good, yeah? Yeah, thanks. This movie treats its protagonist so poorly, they might as well have someone pull out all his feathers. Then he would be plucked and cucked. And here are even more scattered, unattended fish and still no birds coming to eat them. At this point, I'm pretty sure the penguins are the asshole hoarders here and likely the true villains of the story. I hear it's customary when you see a penguin that you've previously nursed back to health in the wild to immediately grab an electric guitar and start shredding some f***ing rad-ass licks. Also, holding your food with your mouth so that you can use the binoculars. Also, also, they spotted their air guitar sweater penguin and now they're going to follow him to land because he swam away? Were they just hanging around looking for something to do? How does he communicate with them once they dock? Speaking of which, how did they dock? And now he survived the chainsaw? How much skill to thrill kill a krill? No. So the humans are retreating because it's snowing, which is yet another subplot in this morass of a story. Yeah, it's a blizzard, but it's also f***ing Antarctica. Isn't everyone prepared, nay, expecting this to happen? Carmen, can't you see? Even nature decrees that we be close together. Ramon's only character trait is basically be a waddling sexual harassment suit in the shape of a penguin at this point. If the sea's so far away, how are we gonna catch food? Yeah, what's the point of us starving too? Better question, why do these penguins from the same general area all have markedly different accents? And yes, I know I sinned this in the first Happy Feet too, so here's an extra three sins for not fixing it. As I watch these assholes futilely launch themselves into the side of the cliff over and over, I wonder what the f***ing rush is. They've been in this crater for like a half a day at most. I understand the brief moments of panic, but this bum rush to get out of here immediately is way over the top. Bravo, Lovelace. You brought us a weird bird and sold him as a penguin. What a weird part of this plot to spur on a protagonist fight before the final act of the movie cliche. Like, there's global f***ing warming happening all around, but let's beef about this f***ing puffin that's been disguised as a penguin. Oh no, the cult leader to which you immediately pled fealty was a fraud. Reality kicks you in the beak, eh? Ah well, it's good to get them life experience when they're this age. Probably nine, ten weeks old. Hey, guys, we should try this. And that's all the explanation, exposition, and thematic exploration we will get about this plan. So Mumble's dancing right now to shake the snow loose and build an escape for the rest of the colony, and I swear to God, it's the only thing he does in this f***ing movie. Elijah Wood has like ten total lines in this thing, which is fairly typical of animated sequels, but this is a sequel that prominently features Matt Damon and Brad f***ing Pitt. These penguins create an avalanche of snow that is so large the amount of snow might lead them out of this giant canyon and yet so gentle it allows them to keep dancing during it. What luck! <laughs> so you're telling me this sweater is made out of a single thread that is so strong it can hold them both while it's being gripped by mumble sharp beak? That's quite a yarn. Also, this is a lot of false tension considering we've seen a few dozen penguins fall from this exact height with no ill effects whatsoever. Why didn't I see this before? You're really beautiful. The lesson as always, kids, is no doesn't mean no. It just means try harder and she'll eventually realize you aren't the douchebag you actually are for pressuring someone after they've expressed clear boundaries. Now go out there and turn those adamant no's into miracle yeses. In case you couldn't tell by my sarcasm, you should never do this. Seriously, more glacier shifting? Come on, it's not like the polar ice is deteriorating that fast. 
pretty sure 73% of this movie takes place right f***ing here, on the precipice of the crater. And that would be fine, considering budget constraints for a regular-ass movie, but this shit is animated and massively funded. Is this the end? Don't tease me, bro. Will. <laughs> you know, the ocean is big. Really big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. It's not as big as, say, space, but it's really big. My point is, there's no f***ing way that Bill found Will after all of his journey. I'm pretty sure Brad Pitt has a writer in his contract that if he appears in a movie, then there must be at least one Fight Club-esque scene in it. Made the set of the Tree of Life pretty f***ing awkward. There sure are a lot of carnivorous elephant seals around here, and these two penguins look like some tasty-ass morsels, especially the little one. No one tries to eat them. They could tell everyone what penguin tastes like, and the baby tastes the best. And the kings are all fools. Tosca taunting. This movie decided Vanilla Ice didn't make enough of a mockery of queens under pressure, so it decided to f*** it even harder with actual ice. Sometimes you gotta back up to go forward. And then in an avalanche of a thousand pound ice chunks falling from several stories, every last penguin died a painful and gruesome death at the end. Jesus Christ, they're still singing while the snow pounding is going on. <laughs> Did anything actually happen in this goddamn movie? Oh, thank God, their long national nightmare of roughly 22 to 24 hours, during which they were well-fed and very comfortable, is finally over. No worries. Yep, that existential threat of the rapid melting of our habitat, which caused the central conflict of this movie, can go f*** itself. Hakuna Matata, bitches! I'm freezing my nuts off! Free pillow pet is so Let's take a Winston break. Have a glorious Marshalls. He likes it. Oh, no. uh, Bobby, you can taste. You wanted hair? No. It's more oh, so many cars. For only 99. Marshalls. What the hell? Oh, no, who cares? God, I want so many. Forget the Marshalls. From basic menu, it tastes like a snack. Getting it. I'm getting really upset. Tired. How you doing there, big guy? You want a soda? What's a best friend for if you cannot bring a daddy and his boy together? I've abandoned my child! Those are mountains. No waves. Oh, that was a big one. I hate it when that happens. You scared? You suicidal? Only in the morning. Well, man, Jamal, man, just cut my man some slack, dog. Look here, man, I'm just trying to help him save face, all right? I mean, you know, he keep asking questions like that. Motherfuckers gonna think he's stupid. Fluffy, don't float. Well, float down here. Jesus, kid. When I was your age, I didn't need no f***ing gorilla. And I wasn't as big as one of your legs. Four kids beat me up one time, and I went crying home to my daddy, and you know what he did? He made it all better? No, he kicked my ass. Right ahead. So that means I'm going to be taking a craft over in international waters without permission, which by definition makes me a pirate. Mark Watney, space pirate. Daddy, I was flying. Oh, Eric. Really flying. Son, we're penguins. We can't fly. That wasn't flying. That was falling with style. Oh, I've already picked out the names. Mikey, Ricky, Danny, Terry, Mikey, Davey, Timmy, Tommy, Joey, Robbie, Johnny, and Brian. Mike, 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 Mike,